At a presentation for investors and shareholders, the Walt Disney Company has officially detailed their upcoming Disney Plus streaming service, which will launch in late 2019. The three and a half hour panel included presentations from all of Disney's subsidiary brands and entertainment groups, dropping plenty of new announcements and nuggets of information along the way. For those of you who can't be bothered sitting through the entire panel, which is, might I add, even longer than Avengers Endgame, I've compiled all the major information and reveals in this one tidy little package. I'll not only be using footage from the panel itself, but also the officially released slides from the presentation. Firstly, let's take a look at Disney Plus in general. Of course, Disney Plus will be the official streaming platform for all things Disney, including Disney Motion Pictures, Disney Animation, Disney Television, Disney Channel, Pixar, Marvel, Lucasfilm and Star Wars, and National Geographic. It will also officially include a substantial amount of family-friendly content from Disney's latest acquisition in 21st Century Fox, both film and television. Disney Plus will launch in the USA on November 12, 2019, though it has been revealed to be a global platform, which will, to quote, rapidly expand across nearly all major regions between the end of 2019 and the end of 2021. Following the USA, Disney Plus will launch across Western Europe between the first and second quarters of 2020, across Asia Pacific between the first quarter of 2020 and the fourth quarter of 2021, in Latin America in the first quarter of 2021, and across Eastern Europe between the first and fourth quarter of 2021. It was noted that Disney's aim is to have all content available in all geographies, though it may take some time for specific content to lapse with regional distributors before it appears on global services. For example, if a television station has local rights to a particular series or a regional streaming service has local rights to a specific movie. However, it is said that all global distribution rights will lapse back to Disney within the next two years. Again, Disney Plus is said to be the place for Disney content as Disney finally aims to have global control over all of their content and allow the consumer unprecedented access to their back catalogue. New release movies from Captain Marvel onward will have their streaming debut on Disney Plus, though it was also noted that these films will still receive traditional home media releases slightly earlier than the digital launch. The service will launch at $6.99 US dollars per month with an option for annual subscription, which will cost $69.99 US dollars per year. This breaks down to $5.93 US per month. For perspective, that's about 10 Australian dollars per month or 100 Australian dollars annually. Likewise, it's roughly six British pound per month or 55 British pound annually, depending if the pricing structure remains the same globally. Disney Plus will be available across all platforms, including smart TVs, computers, smartphones, gaming consoles, and all major streaming devices, including Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Google Chrome. Disney Plus content will be available in 4K ultra high definition with HDR and will be completely ad free. The service will also allow you to download content, which you can keep for an unlimited amount of time as long as you are a subscriber. Disney showed off a prototype layout of the streaming service, which might I add looks fantastic. It will allow access to all content via a main hub with specific sections for their various properties, which will house all the content from each brand. There will be an option to filter titles by movies, series, or original content, and will also feature standard functions that will allow the ability to do a title search, create a watch list, and set a Disney character avatar. The platform so far looks very simple, very streamlined, and incredibly convenient. For those in Europe, this layout may look fairly similar to the current Disney Live streaming app that has been on offer for a number of years now. As I have speculated on this channel many times before, at the panel it was practically confirmed that the sole existence of Disney Live was to test the streaming market and gauge consumer content interest for their major global app. Already I'm seeing many improvements over Disney Live, including the overall layout and accessibility of it. Now let's take a look at what content will be on offer on Disney Plus, including details of newly announced announced exclusive originals. From Walt Disney Animation Studios, it was announced that Disney Plus will be the permanent home for their animated films, noting that their animation library has never been as conveniently or permanently available. The entire 13 film signature collection will be available from day one of launch and will stay on the service for perpetuity, finally officially bringing an end to the decades old Disney Vault structure. It's also said that from day one, a vast majority of the studio's recent animated films will be available to stream as well, with select classics from the various D23 
Disney eras. Going by this graphic, Disney Plus will offer up 39 animated titles on launch day. This leaves 18 other titles which won't be available on launch day, though it's promised that there will be many more to come over the first year alone. Again, newer releases such as Frozen 2 will launch on the service following traditional home media releases. From Disney Live Action, Disney Plus will offer at least 37 titles on launch day, including vintage classics like Mary Poppins, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Treasure Island, Parent Trap and Tron, and modern classics like Pirates of the Caribbean, National Treasure, Alice in Wonderland, The Princess Diaries and The Santa Claus. More films will follow over year one, including Beauty and the Beast, Christopher Robert and Maleficent, which likely have their rights tied up in some other distributor at the moment, as well as the entirety of Disney's 2019 theatrical slate. As far as live action originals go, Disney promises exclusive films that are produced with the same love and care as their theatrical releases. New logos were revealed for Noel, focusing on Santa's sister and starring Anna Kendrick, and Timmy Failure, based on the illustrated book series. The previously announced movies Stargirl and Togo, starring Willem Dafoe, were also briefly discussed. All four originals will be available soon after launch and throughout year one. The biggest news when it comes to original live action, of course, came in the form of the upcoming live action Lady and the Tramp, which will be available from day one of launch. We were given our very first look at the film, which to me confirms my worst nightmare that this is going to be one of those let's film real animals and put animated lips on them kind of movies. However, it was promised that the film will stand toe to toe with their other live action retellings, so I'm going to remain cautiously optimistic about this one. The film will star Tessa Thompson and Justin Thoreau as Lady in the Tramp, alongside Thomas Mann, Ashley Jensen, Chanel Monet, Kiersey Clement, Benedict Wan, and Yvette Nicole Brown. A number of new documentary series will also launch on the platform, which will be catered to fans of their brands. This will include Encore, a revitalization of a 2017 TV special starring Kristen Bell, where she will reunite old classmates and cast of high school musicals to recreate their original performances from yesteryear, and a documentary film series titled The Imagineering Story, which will trace the evolution and history of Disney Imagineering in the Disney parks across the world, and will include exclusive interviews and footage of the Disney parks around the world. The series will come from filmmaker Leslie Iwerks, the granddaughter of Disney legend Ub Iwerks, who was instrumental in the formation of the studio in the 1920s. I'm particularly looking forward to this one myself. From Pixar, it was announced that 18 of their films will be available from day one of launch, spanning Toy Story through to Cars 3, with the remaining three films launching throughout the first year, allowing access to the entire Pixar film canon. Every one of Pixar's theatrical shorts will also be available from day one of launch as well. Of course, a few days ago, we got word that Monsters, Inc. sequel spin-off series Monsters at Work will launch on the service, which will be produced by Disney Television Animation. A small piece of test footage was played for investors, but not screened on the live stream. We did, however, get our first look at the show by way of this thumbnail that appeared during the demo presentation, which still doesn't really confirm whether the series will be in 2D or 3D animation. The series, which will star Billy Crystal and John Goodman, will launch within the first year of the service. Pixar also announced two brand new exclusive Disney Plus animated productions. Forky Asks a Question, a 10 episode series focusing on Toy Story 4 character Forky, which will follow him as he asks the other toys in Bonnie's room some of life's most imponderable questions, such as what is life, what is love, and what is cheese. It will be available from day one of launch. And Bo Peep Lamp Life, a new short film which will tell of the thrilling adventures, trials and tribulations experienced by Bo Peep during her time between Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 4. This should also launch within the first year of the service. Additionally, Pixar will be developing a series of non-scripted documentaries focusing on the artistry, craftsmanship and storytelling of the Pixar filmmakers and artists in cinematic and personal episodes. These will roll out across the first year of launch and beyond. As for Marvel, it was announced that a somewhat random selection of MCU films will be available from day one of launch, including Captain Marvel. Again, the randomness of this tells me that it's likely that the Marvel films have their distribution rights tied up with other distributors or streaming platforms around the world. The first year will also see the addition of eight more MCU titles, including Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War. This will leave ten films still to be added in the future, including the first two Avengers films and Captain America 
America Civil War. No word on when these will launch or if the service will ever offer access to Incredible Hulk or the two Spider-Man MCU films considering they are with other distributors. A number of exclusive series will also be heading to Disney Plus from Marvel Studios which are said to be major storylines and long form stories that will have ramifications across the entire MCU including both the series and films. It was promised that the series will be produced at the same level of quality as the theatrical films. These series will include the previously announced Loki series starring Tom Hiddleston which will focus on many of Loki's adventures set across thousands of years and two newly announced series Falcon and Winter Soldier starring Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan which will take a deeper dive into the characters of Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes as they're once again forced to team up. We also get our first look at the series logo which looks great and also the newly announced WandaVision starring Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany reprising their roles as the Scarlet Witch and the Vision. Concept art for the series was shown to investors but not made publicly available. The series is described as unexpected and surprising and only something Marvel can do in a long form series. Marvel Studios will also officially spearhead their first animated series titled What If? which will take pivotal moments from the MCU and turn them on their head inspired by the comic series of the same name. For example the first episode of the series will focus around what if Peggy Carter was the one who became a super soldier and what if Steve Rogers stayed a scrawny young kid who went off to fight in an armoured suit. The series will feature both new and returning cast members to voice their animated counterparts. Marvel Studios will also produce two unscripted series, Marvel 616 focusing on the vast history and influences of the Marvel comics characters and stories and Marvel's The Hero Project which tells stories of real life heroes. Another series which will utilise over 10 years of behind the scenes footage will also be expected. From the Star Wars camp nothing incredibly new was announced it's likely the bigger announcements will be held off until Star Wars Celebration this weekend. However it was announced that from launch day one the original two Star Wars trilogies plus The Force Awakens and Rogue One will be available to stream while The Last Jedi, Solo and Episode 9 will be available across year one. It was announced that Jon Favreau's eight episode The Mandalorian series will be available to stream on launch day. The series is described as familiar but cutting edge and like the recent films combines animatronics and puppetry with state of the art technology including the virtual reality cinematography tools that Favreau has used on the Jungle Book and the Lion King films. The Mandalorian will soon be followed by a Rogue One prequel series focusing on Cassian Andor and K2SO's adventures which will officially star Diego Luna and Alan Tudyk in their respective original roles. It was also noted that there will be plenty more live action series to come. The new series of The Clone Wars was briefly touched on but no expected release date was announced. Lucasfilm also announced that they will produce a number of exclusive non-fiction programs which will bring viewers inside Lucasfilm and Star Wars. The first series of which will focus on legendary master craftspeople who have brought the galaxy to life. As for content from the Disney Channel, 5,000 episodes of Disney Channel original series and 100 Disney Channel original movies will be available on launch. These will include the likes of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, Lizzie McGuire, Hannah Montana and High School Musical. Speaking of High School Musical, the rumoured High School Musical the musical the series was officially announced with a logo and a showreel being showcased. The series is set to be a worthy reinvention of the original franchise 10 years in the making. It will be available from launch day one. Also announced was a brand new original animated Phineas and Ferb movie which will star the original series voice cast and will drop in year one of the service. The entire 127 episode of the original series however will be available on launch. One of Disney's newest acquisitions National Geographic will also home content on the platform and from launch 250 hours of premium National Geographic series and films will be on offer including Academy Award winning documentary film Free Solo. On launch National Geographic will offer a brand new exclusive series titled The World According to Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum was described as one of the most curious people you will ever meet and the series is set to be viewed through the prism of his always inquisitive and highly entertaining mind when nothing is as it seems. The series will tap into his curiosity and passion exploring just about everything. The series will aim to pull back the curtain on seemingly familiar objects to reveal wonderful worlds of astonishing connections, fascinating science, little known history, amazing people and a whole lot of big ideas. Also announced is a brand new documentary series titled Magic of the Animal Kingdom which will spotlight the unsung Disney cast member 
heroes working as animal care experts, veterinarians and biologists at Disney's Animal Kingdom and at Epcot's Sea Base Aquarium in Orlando. The series plans to offer viewers a look at the groundbreaking work carried out at one of the most advanced veterinary facilities in existence for the first time ever. And finally, a small spotlight was put on the Fox content that is expected to be available on launch, which includes many of their family-friendly film titles, including Bend It Like Beckham, Dr. Doolittle, Garfield, Home Alone 3, The Princess Bride, Miracle on 34th Street, and The Sound of Music, as well as the entire series of Malcolm in the Middle. Also confirmed by America's favourite family themselves, the entire first 30 seasons of The Simpsons will be available on the platform from day one of launch, as Disney Plus will now become the official and exclusive streaming home for The Simpsons. This shows us our very first signs of Disney embracing such a lucrative and classic franchise. To break it all down, within the first year of launch, Disney Plus is expected to offer more than 25 original and exclusive episodic series, 10 original and exclusive movies and specials, 7,500 back catalogue episodes of television and 400 past films, plus 100 recent films. By year 5, the service is expected to offer 50 original series, a library of 10,000 past episodes of television and over 500 past films, plus over 120 recent films. That is a far cry from the everything that we were promised by Bob Iger a few weeks back, but it's a great start. Disney Plus promises to launch at least 10 exclusive movies per year well into the future. To give an idea of the breadth of the material that could quite possibly be on offer on Disney Plus within the first year or not too distant future, here's another look at Disney Life's vast catalogue of films and series. Given that Disney Life is more or less a prototype version of Disney Plus, it's likely that most of, if not all of these titles, including vintage and modern classic films and fan favourite series including animations from the Disney afternoon block should be featured on Disney Plus. Given that Disney Life's use as a testing ground has pretty much exhausted its purpose by now, I predict that it will either become defunct somewhere towards the end of this year in preparation for Disney Plus rolling out across Europe or will simply evolve into Disney Plus when the service does hit Europe. I am a big believer in continuing support for physical releases myself, but this service is almost too good to be true. I don't particularly look at this as a service that will replace my physical collection, I will still continue to build my physical Disney library, which includes titles that don't look like they'll be offered on Disney Plus for a long time. But I see Disney Plus as more so something that will complement my collection. Most importantly though, it will give access to all of these great new exclusives that aren't guaranteed to wind up at home media at any point, and some library material that would perhaps otherwise never find a physical release. For those who don't have a physical library and need a quick and easy way to access this content for perpetuity, it seems like Disney Plus will be a very efficient and affordable way to do so. And at that, it's over to you guys out there. What are your overall thoughts on Disney Plus? What are you most excited or surprised to see on the service? Or what are you most surprised to see not on the service? Will you personally be subscribing to Disney Plus, or are you giving it a big hard pass, throw away in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. If this is your first time viewing one of my videos, you like what you've seen, you'd like to see more like this in the future, then please don't forget to hit that big old subscribe button up on your screen right now, and also hit that like button down below if you're feeling extra generous. Also don't forget to check out my many social media accounts, and please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Thanks for watching guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.